You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Uh, starting off at ZDNet, Google quietly dumps Oracle, my SQL, for MariaDB. Despite being the most popular open source database management system, Oracle's MySQL has been sinking into trouble. Major Linux distributions like Red Hat and SUSE are switching it out for its fork, MariaDB. Major websites such as Wikipedia have also replaced MySQL with MariaDB. Now adding insult to injury, Google is moving to MariaDB from MySQL. So pretty interesting. Uh, obviously, there's you know a fair amount of angst against MySQL. I mean, I've been a longtime user of MySQL for personal stuff. Um, you know, I've I've thought about potentially switching over to MariaDB, uh, but you know, time will tell. You know, for my own personal stuff, it's it's less of an issue simply because I don't. You know, it's it's just for my own personal stuff. But uh, nonetheless, um, kind of uh, interesting to say the least. Also, kind of a blow to Oracle, <laughs> you know, because uh, MariaDB is an open source version of basically MySQL. So, pretty interesting. From IT World, Mint Box 2 ships with Linux Mint 15 and Core i5 processors. That's right. Uh, Linux Gizmos reports that the Mint Box Mini PC is shipping with Linux Mint 15 and Core i5 processors. It's a neat little computer. Um, obviously Linux Mint is the default distro on it. It's a, it, they've got a screenshot of it here and it's pretty awesome. Uh, it has started shipping. You can get it for $599. Um, you know, Linux Mint 15, the Olivia is, uh, pre-installed. So pretty cool. If you're looking for a little plug and play Linux computer, this could be it. From Tom's Guide over at tomsguide.com, Samsung may release a Tizen-based TV, one or more Tizen-based TVs, uh, in 2014. Interesting. So a Tizen HD TV would fit perfectly within Samsung's non-Android multi-device experience. Um Bu Kyun Yoon, uh, co-CEO of Samsung and head of the consumer electronics business, recently told German publication Die Welt in an interview that the Tizen platform could appear in HDTVs as soon as 2014. It will be part of Samsung's connected experience spanning tablets, phones, TVs, and other devices. I have to say, Samsung has really been hitting it hard uh, in being the next Apple. I mean, they are just watching what they're doing. Uh, they are looking to be a force to be reckoned with. They are not to be trifled with at all. Um, and even more so, they're, they're supporting cool stuff like Tizen and you know, Android. And I mean, it's like instead of roll their own, well, they're kind of effectively rolling their own because they've literally effectively forked Android on their phones. But that's beside the point. Um, you know, they're they're not taking the proprietary route and kind of going the open source route while they're doing this, which is pretty neat. From Daily Finance, Red Hat releases Red Hat Developer Toolset 2.0 with an update to GCC. This is kind of neat. Uh, Red Hat Inc., the world's leading provider of open source solutions, today has announced the general, and this today is September 12th, so this past week, has announced the general availability of Red Hat Developer Toolset 2.0. It's available to all Red Hat customers with active Red Hat Enterprise Linux developer subscription. Red Hat Developer Toolset provides access to the latest stable versions of open source development tools on a separate, accelerated lifestyle. 
pretty cool. So if you are a Red Hat developer tool set user, this is definitely something you want to be looking into. Uh, I've talked about this next uh, item on my sister show, The Geekinator. But however, because it involves Linux, uh, for those of you who watch both shows, you might as well fast forward for a minute or so. But uh, this is about the latest Arduino that has been released, the Arduino Yun. It's an, a Linux and Wi-Fi mashup with Arduino. Uh, Yun in Chinese stands for cloud. And it's uh, pretty cool. It comes with a built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Ethernet port, a USB port, so you can plug stuff like hard drives in and that sort of thing. Um, in addition to the AT Mega uh, 32U something or other, it's basically a, an Arduino, the equivalent of an Arduino Leonardo. Uh, it also has a little uh, system on a chip running Linux with the uh, distribution that's basically the equivalent of uh, OpenWRT, which is kind of neat. So um, 802.11n Ethernet, I, I, I believe it's at least 10100. I don't think it's gigabit. I don't think it goes that fast, but you've got at least 802.11n Ethernet. Pretty neat. Uh, I'm definitely, I've got a, actually, I have something in mind for this. So I'll be looking into this as soon as I can get my hands on one. Should be pretty cool. Uh, from Engadget, Raspberry Pi gets audio file credentials thanks to Raspi Phi Linux Distro. This is pretty neat. The Raspberry Pi and Raspi MC OS already make a solid combo as a media center. But if you encounter music-related limitations, then it may be worth giving the Raspi Phi Distro a shot instead. In addition to supporting Apple AirPlay and a range of lossless file types, this audio-centric form of Linux also works with a long list of external USB powered DACs and a DAC is a DAC digital audio digital to analog converter including asynchronous playback so you can avoid relying on your Pi's tiny stock DAC and amplifier. Raspi Phi's other big feature is that it comes with its own web-based UI which ought to make it easy to control playback of both local and streamed content. So Pretty cool. Definitely check this out if you has a have a Raspberry Pi and you're looking for maybe an alternative uh, media server to hook up to your TV. From IT World, how to choose the best Linux server for your business. This is from uh, Stephen J. Von Nichols. He writes, there may be only dozens of Linux servers compared to over a thousand Linux desktops, but still it's not easy picking picking the right one for your enterprise. Let me help. With over 20 years of Linux experience, I know a thing or two about Linux servers. So he basically then gives a rundown of some of the best things uh, that he thinks you should be looking for with regards to a Linux server. And uh, then basically gives a rundown of what he thinks is the best Linux server. Uh, breaks it out for those that are new to Linux, the best Linux server for non-experts, and the best Linux server for experts. So pretty cool. Uh, I thought this was a pretty neat write-up. Now, myself personally, I, I do have a home server right there. I've mentioned it multiple times. You can't really see it, uh, but it's right underneath the frame here. It's it's a black box with lots of hard drives in it. And it, and, and I, but I don't run Linux, and I don't run Windows, and I obviously I don't run Mac OS. Uh, I, I run FreeBSD, and I actually just recently upgraded it. Uh, both the hardware and uh, the FreeBSD. So now I'm on FreeBSD 9. And uh, previously I was on 8 point something. Now it's 9.1. Uh, I think it's 9.1 9 or 9.2, whatever the latest version is. Um, pretty cool. You know, and the reason why I run FreeBSD is because I'm a heavy user of ZFS. I have lots, you know, as you can probably imagine, doing you know, video podcast uses lots and lots and lots and lots of storage space. And uh, you just, you have to have it. You know, you got to have the storage space. And ZFS provides a really super simple, easy way for me to manage my storage. You know, I've gone through several disk failures and several, up you know, hardware upgrade cycles over the years since FreeBSD has started uh supporting ZFS and have yet to lose a bit of data, even though I do in fact keep a backup of my system, um, yet to yet to lose a single byte of data 
um, and have not even ever had to rely on the backup. I've exercised it to make sure it works, but I've not had to even rely on that backup. So kind of cool. Anyway, uh, just thought I'd point this out. If you're looking for Linux for a server, um, he's got a great rundown of what might be a, a good fit, uh, depending on whether you're new to Linux, not really an expert, or you are an expert. So with that, uh, that's the end of the show. Uh, I, thanks for watching and listening. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. You can find us online over at youtube.com, uh, dailymotion, blip.tv, uh, Vimeo, TuneIn, uh, Stitcher Radio. Um, you can also sub subscribe directly to an Og Vorbis, an MP3 feed, and or a video feed directly from our website. The links for that uh, are in the show notes uh, for each and every episode. You can uh, use your podcatcher of choice, whatever it is. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.